Hey guys, welcome to another episode of InRange. Today I'm talking to you about night vision, but specifically digital night vision and latency, or at least perceived latency. Ever since I started doing some night vision content on the channel, I've been a big fan and a proponent of this Psyonix Opsin digital monocular. And I do believe that digital night vision is the future. Uh, even if this unit still has somewhere to go, of course, and this is a early attempt at digital night vision, although one of the best iterations and most modern ones on the market, there's still a lot of room for improvement with digital night vision, but I do believe that this particular unit is a very viable, realistic alternative to analog generation three tubes. But one of the things that has come up in multiple videos here on the channel is people complained about latency with digital night vision. Latency would be when you're looking with the optic and turn your head, it takes a noticeable a moment for it to catch up with the image that is now being sent to your eyeball. And sort of like a game with a slow frame rate. And the reason that is, is the way digital night vision works versus analog. And the way I'm going to demonstrate that I don't believe the latency in the Psyonix Obsin is a problem is by using it to drive in my vehicle around with this being my only source of visible light to me. And if you were driving with something with high latency, I don't think you could. But first of all, let's talk about why latency exists at all in digital night vision and does not exist with analog night vision. So. This is a PVS-7, and most of you think of this as, you know, somewhat dated technology, and to some degree it is. It's a single tube that's split to both eyes. So you have one image intensifying tube, but it goes to both eyes. A PVS-14, of course, which is considered more modern, goes to only one eye, just like this Opsin monocle does. That said, this does have a generation three tube in it, so it has similar light intensification, or essentially identical light intensification capabilities as some of the middle grade PVS-14 units. I am recording through the PVS-7 with this little bolt-on unit called a brain exploder. It has a piece of glass here that's reflective and it reflects some of the light coming out of that eye to a camera here on the right. What I do want to tell you is that the image that you're going to see in the video from the PVS-7 is darker than it actually is when you're using it yourself. It just doesn't capture as much of the light as your eyes see to this camera. So while it is useful to record through the PVS-7 using the Brain Exploder, it is darker than it is if you're using it naturally or yourself. But let me first of all explain in the most crude ways why there isn't a latency issue with analog night vision in that there's not really anything computing going on. Here's what's happening. There's an objective lens and the objective lens of course is larger than the human eye and therefore can collect more light than your eye could anyway. So using binoculars, for example, with just really large objective lenses, you'll be able to see in darker, see dimmer objects than you could with the human eye naturally. That happens right here with this objective lens. It then projects that light onto a device that changes photons, which is visible light, and not visible light, as in infrared, which this can also pick up, the all night vision can pick up outside of the spectrum of the human eye and turns both visible, normal visible light and infrared into, hits that plate and turns those photons into electrons. And those electrons are multiplied. So you've turned photons into electrons and you've made more of those electrons. You then cast those electrons onto a plate, which then glows when the electrons hit it, which makes an image, which is invisible light that the human eye can see. So photons to electrons to a plate which glows, which then emanates photons again for you to see the human eye. All of that happens essentially at the speed of light. It's happening in real time. There's no computing going on. It is the light going through a process and just getting amplified in real time to your eyes. And that's why it's analog, because while it is powered, it is not really a, comp it is not a com computational device. There's no computer in that. But when you use digital night vision, you're essentially taking a digital camera, a CCD, and then using uh, some other in image intensification methodologies, you're using a computer that has code in it and a CPU to then take that image that the objective lens is seeing and then amplifying it. Well, it's a very sensitive CCD, but then amplifying that using, and again, this is a very crude and rough explanation, using the code and computing technology to image enhanceify the image to then put it onto an LCD display. There's like a little computer screen in here on this end that is visible to your eye. So the light hits the objective lens, goes to a CCD. The CCD sends the image that it sees to a computer. The computer processes that image and then sends the processing result 
to an LCD display that you can then visibly see with your normal natural eye. But of course, that is not just light passing through an image intensification tube and having photons turned into electrons turned into photons. That's photons turned into a computer in, into a CCD that then is turned into code, which is then analyzed and enhanced and then projected onto a screen. So the speed of the computer is deterministic on how fast it can take what it's seeing here and making an image that you can see here. Therefore, if the computer is not fast enough or can't do that computing fast enough, when you move, there could be latency, maybe even tearing like you see in a computer game that has low uh, FPS as you move your head. And so earlier iterations of digital night vision, including the Aurora from Opsin, apparently has some more perceivable uh, latency. There is latency in the Psyonix Opsin, but I do not think that the latency that is in this unit is sufficient to consider it a problem. So what I'm gonna do now is we're gonna go over to my car and we're gonna get in there and it's gonna get dark and then we're gonna go for a drive twice. One with the PVS7, one with the Opsin, hopefully about at the same speed. I'm gonna match up those two pieces of video content, split screen it shortly for you, and that should show to you that it is certainly possible to drive with a digital night vision, at least the newest generation thereof, and that the latency here is insufficient to be a problem. Okay, so the car I'm gonna use for this is my old 1974 Volkswagen thing. This is about as analog a car as you can get if we wanna use that terminology. And so the reason I'm using this is one of the things you don't think about when trying to use night vision in a modern vehicle is that no matter what, there's some sort of lights emanating from the dashboard. And with this car, there are not. The lights only come on if you actively turn them on. And I even have a switch here that I have rigged to kill my brake lights. So you can run this car in complete darkness without any lights from the dashboard messing up your night vision or your perception thereof. When you try to use night vision in modern vehicles, there's always stuff glowing on the dashboard or it doesn't even have a standard like a speedometer. It has some sort of LCD display, which of course is backlit and that totally blows your night vision. So at any rate, let's get this old 1974 car fired up and let's go do some driving. You enjoyed watching that i think i matched it up very closely so that you're essentially going exactly down the same piece of road um, at the same time on both sides of the screen with both optics and you'll see that i'm driving essentially the same speed and that using the analog night vision or the digital night vision the psionics option even with some latency that's going on with its computing capabilities was irrelevant to my ability to drive in essentially very low light conditions so in this regard, I still think, and I'm going to say again, that I very much believe that the Psyonix Opsin is a viable alternative to analog night vision, especially middle grade generation three tubes. 
its, its image intensification isn't quite as good as some of the better Gen 3 systems out there, but it has other features, for example, being able to record directly into the unit, um, having GPS coordinates, having Wi-Fi if you want it, uh, and other things like that, as well as having, as you saw in the video, significant broader span of the color spectrum perceivable to you when you're using it than just the green or white or whatever color you're getting out of your analog night vision. One thing I do want to remind you is that InRange has no corporate sponsors and no overlords. Psyonix did not send me this unit. They did not tell me to do this video. I did this video with a Psyonix option that I purchased with my own money um, so that I could give you a fair and accurate review. If you like this sort of real world content that is not biased by any advertisers or any corporations, please, please consider supporting me on patreon.com slash inrange TV. Uh, I am completely demonetized in Ring Range on YouTube. No advertisers, no AdSense account. Make no money from YouTube Red or YouTube Premium or any of that. I only make the ability to run this channel and make content like this for you, the viewer, by viewers like you directly supporting me. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you liked it, share with your friends. Stay tuned for more. Thanks for watching.